Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. What's up? Not much. Another day. Another episode. Another episode. Another day, another episode. That's yeah. our new our new thing. Yes. I overheard a conversation the other day. You were eavesdropping. I, I was in line. Oh. That's another one. <laughs> don't you I think you don't realize I don't people don't realize how loud they are loud they are yeah. and how open they are in public when yeah. they're speaking about things. I am not an eavesdropper by nature, but yeah. you know, you've noticed the trend where people talk on speakerphone in public. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was in line the other day and I overheard two younger people, um, a man and a woman, speaking about this idea of work-life balance, they were talking about, I know for us, our generation, we're like, what is that? Is that the topic? For what? Work-life balance. I was thinking about it because these two younger people, I would say they were probably in their 20s, maybe middle 20s, yeah. were, were equating this idea of creating work-life balance as a means to creating happiness. Yeah. And I was thinking about, you and I always talk about the mental models we have yeah. and how they shape our actions, our behaviors, the decisions we make. And it, to me, it occurred to me, oh, I wanted to talk to you about that, is this setting yourself up in a way for failure? Is, is work-life balance a myth? Is it even a mental model we should be pursuing? Is it always connected to happiness? And just, you know, doing the thing I do in my brain. Well, it is what you make it, you know. I mean, um, so, I mean, work-life balance is just another mental model that we have. And, you know, this one's a, sort of a simple one because it's a, it's what we call an RDS, which is uh, two things that are related, right? So you have two things, work and life, and they're related by a relationship that we might call balance. No pun intended. Balancing <laughs> on the pen there, right? And so we're thing. trying to we're trying to figure out what this balance thing is between these two things. This balanced relationship between work and life. We also have to zoom in to you know and distinguish what is work, what is life. How is life different from work? How is life you know similar to work? What's part of work? What's part of life? And so, you know, work might have some pieces to it and life might have some pieces to it. And that's if you want to distinguish those two things, right? So you've already, you've already started with the notion of, of something, a mental model of something, which may or may not be the mental model that you personally want to choose for your life. Meaning deciding that they're, they need to be separate. Is, well, is the, the no, first part. The, the label work-life balance, which yeah. labels this whole system, implies that this system exists. And the question right. is, does it? Is that the best way for you to look at work and life? And, you know, and it might be. You might decide, yeah, this is a good model for me. I want to make sure, you know, here's my work. I want to keep it separate from my life. Here's my life. I keep it separate from my work. And I want to balance them. But the whole, that whole way of thinking is just one way of thinking. You could also think, how would I better integrate these things into, you know, so here's one model, right? Right. You know, a different model is here's a life and there's some work and there's some not work inside of it. Right. Right. Or here's a life and there are just components to the life, right? So that's... That's a different model than this model. But what's interesting is, there are a couple of things that are interesting watching you do this. The first is, when you do have a, dis a distinction between work and life, what then these particular people that I, I overheard talking, they really need to focus in on this. Yes. Understanding, distinguishing, th trying to build their better understanding of what it means to balance them. Yes, except, I would say if they quickly go into this balance thing mm -hmm. and they start deconstructing what, what are the parts of balance, how do I achieve balance, 
you're already kind of down the road on a bunch of assumptions that work and life are separate. And that might be the way that you want to have it, mm -hmm. but it might not be. I'll give you an example. For my own life, I've attempted to not distinguish between life and work. I want my work to be entirely integrated in, into my life. I want it to be in flow. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying it was right for me. So if you start with this model, you start with a set of assumptions that if you never question those assumptions in the first place and just get to work on the balance, mm -hmm. you never sort of question, well, is work really a distinctly separate thing from life? And should it be? You know, we spend eight hours a day times 300, you know, 200 and whatever, 300 days a year or whatever the, the uh, calculation is for however many years. How much of what percentage of your life is that work and and you're going to separate it from life? Those are questions that you can ask yourself based on this model and, and ask yourself, is this a is this a model that I want to continue utilizing as the way that I structure things? Right. And what what's interesting is when somebody says the words work life balance, there's a structure, Th those words imply a structure. That distinction is this. is this whole system. This is a distinct system called work-life balance. Right. And when they say the words, the, the label for the distinction, work-life balance, this is work-life balance. Mm -hmm. That This is what they mean. This is the structure. Work is distinguished from life, and there is a relationship, and that relationship sometimes gets a kilter, Right. And we want to bring it into balance, right? And generally speaking, I think what they mean is that this one tend, this work one tends to uh, get in the way of this life one. That tends to be the implication. But you know whether or not that's the case is neither here nor there. But the point is, do you want to make these distinctions in the first place? And if you do, great. Then you can move on to if you've if you've challenged this distinction between work and life. And you've challenged what exactly constitutes work and what constitutes life and how they're different. Mm -hmm. it, then, then you can then move on to the balance part. But if you jump right to the balance part without questioning whether or not these are things that you want to exist, distinctions that you want to adhere to, then I think you can get caught up in a concept that isn't yours. It was just handed to you and you never questioned it. Yeah, I think you get caught up in a concept that isn't necessarily yours and then you also get into a concept that so many people have opinions about yeah and it's almost as if you want to take a step back and and first recognize the distinction you're making question what are the implications of that distinction that i'm making yes does it mean that i'm constantly unhappy over here because i have this mental model that this has to be nine to five, no emails on the weekends. Well, the world doesn't quite work that way anymore, which mm -hmm. means you're sort of setting yourself up for frustration because it's kind of a false distinction at this point in some ways. Yeah, I mean, it, but it depends. For example, I, you know, I'll give you a, a great example, like an a example where maybe this is exactly the, the model that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not criticizing this model. I'm, right. I'm what I'm simply saying is make sure this is the model for you. Yes. So for example, let's say you uh, want to be an Olympic athlete and you want to win the gold medal. I do. Right? I want to be an Olympic <laughs> In athlete. In swimming or something, right? And you know, the bills, you got to pay your bills. Yep. You try to keep your bills real low and all that so that you can focus on coaching and you know, access and all that stuff, right? But you're working to become, in, you're working to get to the Olympics. Well, places like Home Depot have a great program for, from what I understand, for, for that type of person, where they can kind of have a job that doesn't get in the way of their life, right? So the job, working at Home Depot, doesn't get in the way of their life, which is become an Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. And while you're working your way up to becoming an Olympic athlete, you might have to have this kind of work-life balance because you really care about making it to the Olympics. Right. You know, no, no offense to Home Depot, but you, maybe you don't care that much about your job. And in that particular case, 
this is a, a reasonable model because it, it represents reality, the reality of your situation well. I think what you're getting at is the difference between the job and a career. So like a lot of actors have jobs doing other things until their acting yes. takes off. So right. they wait table. You, you hear celebrities all the time. Yeah, oh, I used tables. to be a bartender. Yep. I used to be a this. So it's the same thing with athletes, right? So there's a job, and that job allows you to be working on your life, which is actually a, a career athlete. Right? Yeah. Or, you know, so there's, which is interesting because now all of these distinctions start out seeming clear. And then the more you talk about them, they they get a That's little fuzzier. That's how all distinctions fuzzier, work. Yeah, they right? get fuzzier. I mean, I think we, we the dirtbags and the fun hogs that, that I come from. The group that you ascribe to. <laughs> well, it's climbers and people, we call ourselves dirtbags and fun hogs and things like that. We're, because we were kind of seasonal we seasonally guided and then we seasonally skied and then you know and we were just always chasing the snow or chasing the climbs or chasing whatever and we lived in our cars and we and and we took jobs at different places but it was never about the job it was about the skiing or it was about the whatever and so we kind of before this was even a term we were doing work life balance but that's very different if 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 somebody said to you Tomorrow, you can have a life where you're doing the thing you love mm -hmm. as, as part of your work. Your answer to that question is really interesting, right? Because some people would say, no, I wouldn't take it. I want this to be my hobby. I don't want this to be my job. I see. Right? Mm -hmm. But some people would say, oh, that's, that's my dream come true. I want to do my hobby for my job. Right. Yeah. And if your answer is the first one, then then this model probably can very much serve you. Mm -hmm. But if your answer is the second one, it, you're really talking about a different model, which is how do I sustain myself at a job so that I can make my life my career? And that's a different mental model. Yes. Right. Yes. Than this one. Yes. Because that one is is totally not in balance. That one is is how do I. How do I utilize this in order to attain this and get rid of this? So it changes the rate of relationship fundamentally is no longer a balancing relationship. It's a causal relationship. And and it's not about balance. It's about you, you we're utilizing this thing as a means to an end. Right. Right. So it has a similar relational structure, but the relationship has an arrow going this way. And this is a means to an end. It's not a, yes. we're not trying to balance these two things. We're trying to get rid of this thing. And to do that. Ha have this thing absorb the entire life. Which then becomes that. Which becomes this. So, so again, it, it's not that mental models are good or bad. It's that you want the mental model to best represent the situation that you're actually in. Yeah. And that model will serve you. Any other model is not going to serve you. It's going to constantly make you make decisions that are not in alignment with what you actually are trying to accomplish. There seem, there seem to be almost um, collective or societal mental models for sure that pop up. So, for example, I remember, it might have been last weekend, I answered an email. And it was probably 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. And the person, I answered them, they were on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. I answered them at 10 o'clock my time, this email on a Saturday. And they immediately responded and said, what are you doing on your email at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night as if I'm not supposed to be on my email at 10 o'clock because I'm not in work-life balance? Mm. You, you know what I mean? So there's there's almost this sense of some of our um, societal norms or expectations, it just occurred to me when you were are actually mental models that are shared by a bunch of people. And then also at times, I don't want to say judgmental, it felt a little judgmental when I got the, that response, like, are you, why are you on your email at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday as if I don't have a life because I'm answering an email? Mm. But the truth, it was a tiny email. It was sort of time sensitive. It was like, oh, I could just answer this now and then I don't have to worry about it, you know, get it done. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I think it's interesting that, that you, you know, you can go from one conversation between two people about something and then you can start to see that these structures actually start to permeate norms and expectations of groups and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all norms are mental models. 
they're just shared mental models. Um, and I think you bring up a, an important point, which is, you know, we get these, ideally you want your mental models to be your mental models, the ones you chose purposefully, metacognitively, you know, that's why metacognition is so important because you get to choose rather than have it chosen for you. I think that's absolutely the most important thing about metacognition is like, if you want to choose to eat a Twinkie, great, go eat as many Twinkies as you want, but don't have your Twinkie choose you, right? Like don't, don't, don't have the marketing that's behind the company choose you, right? If you want to choose to look at your phone, great, look at your phone, but don't have the phone making the choice for you, right? And same with these culturally accepted mental models that come and go and are trendy and all that kind of stuff is like, is that really what I, is that really the way I think? Or did, did I just adopt the thing that was trendy or the thing that is trending right. or the thing that is the norm? And just because something's popular doesn't make it, you know, promising, doesn't make it powerful. It, it just might just be popular. Which it, seem, it seems to me that what that means is when you're saying choose a Twinkie because you want to eat a Twinkie, not because some neuromarketer has figured out how to manipulate your formation of a That's mental right. model that makes you then eat a Twinkie. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of uh, it, the mental model is not choosing us. The, the, some other yeah. person is, is choosing yeah. a mental model for us. Or building or a group of people is manipulating us to choose a mental model and to to think that there's no choice, that it's just something that you have to adopt or whatever. Hmm. And so, you know, work life balance or any of the things, any of the things that are out there and trending, I always, you know, distinguish between fashion and trend. You know, like you want to be fashionable, mm -hmm. but not trendy. And I think the same thing is with your, you know, fashion lasts for yeah. forever, it's, right? It's Good style. fashion style timeless. is timeless, but trends are trends. Same thing with, you can apply that principle to mental models is like, be fashionable, but not trendy. Yeah, I like that. I think what's really interesting to me and- Or be trendy, I mean, you know. You can, well, be yeah, trendy not, when you I'm want to be trendy. Being trendy. I no, just, but there are things like, there are things that are fun trends to participate once in a while because you find them fun, right? If you're making if you the conscious to. choice. I yes. mean, I, I don't mean to go dark or anything, but, you know, what Hitler did was trending. That is, right? that is a big leap. That's a, yeah. What he did was a trend. Yes. Right? And it was a bunch of mental models that people adopted without thinking. Yes. That, that those mental models became their mental models. Because he helped them because build it. Because he and his marketing effort mm -hmm. helped them build it to, to, you know, great pain and suffering yeah. for a lot, of, a lot of people. And, and so, you know, these, these trends can be innocent, but they can also be incredibly damaging. It's how we get people to buy into things they shouldn't buy into. Right, but the, yes, the reverse of that is quite liberating which is if you understand how you're building your mental models and you're checking the distinctions you're making, seeing how you're organizing things, the relationships you're making between things, it's far less easy for people to build them for you. Absolutely. Right. So That's why we have a flag on our barn that, uh, yeah. that says, you know, think it's patriotic because probably the most democratic and patriotic and American thing that you could do is to think for yourself. That's right. You know, not just accept the trendy things that are going on, not just accept the thing that is easy, mm -hmm. but, you know, oh, interesting, work-life balance. You know, think about it. What does that mean? What does it mean? Does it mean this? Oh, is that a good model for me? I don't know. It's well, not for me. Well, also, but no, but not just that, there are costs sometimes. So for example, for a long time, I mean, I think this happens with parents when they have children. Mm -hmm. They believe that they should be striving for work-life balance. The reality is children throw everything off. <laughs> yeah. So you end up working at 11 o'clock yeah. on a Friday night because you can't 
you can't any other way. Mm-hmm. And so you start to you can start to see it differently as, you know, here's my life and my life has like that model. My life has all these parts and I'm going to deal with them in the reality in which they present themselves. Does that or, make sense? Or I can affect that reality. Right? I can affect that reality by having clearer mental models. Say more. Meaning you might be in a situation where you have, you know, yeah, I don't really want to do this job, but the job's paying the bills. And maybe you're not even an Olympic athlete, so you're not even working towards that. You're just you're just like, you know, surviving Uh and you are working the job in order to pay the bills. And it's just the cyclical, Uh you know, thing that's exhausting. Well, you got to create a mental model in your life that says, this is where I'm at right now. I'm in the cycle, but how am I not going to be in this cycle anymore? What things can I do to not be in this cycle? What is the set of things that I can do to get out of this? So you can build a you know a different mental model. I don't want to de- deconstruct this one, but you know there's some set of things that I can do, right? Incrementally, one day at a time, maybe not all at once, that will get me to a different life than the one that I'm currently at. Right, or the one that I'm Which is cyclical, with. which right. is which is just doing all this to maintain this, to do this, to maintain this, to do this, to maintain this, which mm-hmm. is like a never-ending cycle of exhaustion. Right. Okay, well, if I have to do, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things to maintain this life of, uh, you know, five things. Right. Right? So this is what I'm currently in. I got to do these seven things to maintain this life of five things. Okay, can I do one less thing over here and maintain one less thing over here and then utilize that energy to, Mm. give me that pen over there, you know, to uh, to, create a different different option so that I can choose a different option. Right now I don't have an option. I just have this option. But I can open up my options and maybe I can I can take something from here and take not everything. Mm-hmm. That's not realistic. But maybe I can save save a little over here and fudge a little over here mm-hmm. or quiet quit a little or you know whatever <laughs> there's all kinds of things you can do over here and I can take those energy units and apply them to a course of action that's going to end up giving me a different option. Yeah, and the best example of that that I've seen, I've talked to a lot of people who are sort of early part of their of their career, and mm-hmm. they they've realized that this this isn't working for them mm-hmm. long term. So they go and they enroll in an online cool, yeah. or a nighttime program to get them on a path towards something different, right? Towards something where their work and life are more uh, integrated because they're doing something they love or something that creates energy for them. Yep. So they'll they'll do exactly that. They'll they'll put some effort into something like that you gotta, in the long run. And I think that's that's true, except that things change, like we talked about in our last episode, right? Mm-hmm. Things are constantly changing because the world is adapting. So you know, people come along and they go, oh. People that are in this struggle want to go to school, so we'll make school a thing. That they, and then all of a sudden, you go over here thinking, "Oh, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to get out of this cycle," and you get saddled with debt that people are willing to give you, and suddenly you're worse in this cycle, right? Because now you've got all this debt over here. Now we've just added debt, <laughs> right? Now there's more debt. You went to an Ivy League. There's even more debt, right? <laughs> right? Then you're screwed. So we got to think that through. You got to think those things through because the life has changed a little bit. The society's changed a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And now the question is, you know, what can you not learn online for free? What or for much lower cost? What can you? Do you need a degree? I mean, Google. Uh, you know, Google's talking about that they, they, they're not looking for Ivy League degrees anymore. They're not even looking for deg- degrees, right? Right. So, you know, maybe you don't need that kind of expense to get out of the hole that you're in or the cycle that you're in. So that's kind of depressing. Yeah, it is. So what do you do about it? Like, Don't make this mistake. Make sure that this is this is an investment that's going to pay off, right? It's like it's like saying, you know, oh, I'm, I I need 
you know, I need the thing that's stopping me from having this life is enough money. So I'm going to go to Vegas and gamble. Well, that's a dumb decision that that you're 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 not distinguishing between gambling, which is high risk, high reward mm -hmm. and something that's going to be kind of lower risk, lower re reward, maybe incremental, maybe, you know, something like that. So and don't buy into the societal norms. Meaning don't don't subscribe to other people's mental models about things. Build your own and and figure out ways that don't actually make Let me put worse. it differently. If I say that if I say uh, let's wipe all this plate in here on first side, right? You have two things. You have a college degree. Well, a college degree is worthless. A college degree is massively important. Mm -hmm. Right. And can increase your you know, net worth and uh, earning potential for decades. Right. Which one's true? Depends on the context. Depends on the context. Depends on the degree. Dep it depends. It depends. It depends is the yeah. answer. Depends so don't ways. don't just listen to Elon Musk when he says, you know, all the all college degrees are useless. We don't need to do it. You shouldn't go get it. OK, there's some truth in that. And don't listen to all these colleges that are selling you grad degrees for, you know, 30 and $60,000 that are cash cows for them. Right. And, you know, there's some truth to that. Right. right. So there's some truth to both of these. But there but don't don't group those two examples, which are true mm -hmm. as being that that applies to all of these examples. Right. Where a college degree doesn't do that, where a college degree does train you to be an engineer or do something that that other people can't do and it does train you to uh, and give you connections and networks and opportunities and things like that right mm -hmm. so don't buy into the hype is the point make your own mental models and investigate further to sort of say hey you know what there's truth in both of these statements it's an and both, not an either or. It's not college degrees are useless, college degrees are useful. It's sometimes they can be useful and sometimes they can be useless. Make sure you find the one that isn't useless. Right, and I also think when, I think that's right, when you're presented with two opposing views, to me, I mean, I'm older, so I've sort of learned a lot. To me, I'm always, I always tell myself, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle of mm -hmm. these two extremes. And I think that's true of a lot of things that are framed for us generally, mental models that people offer us that are sort of these opposite extremes. Mm -hmm. And I think as a habit, what we should do is focus on, well, it's not this or that. It's like what you said, it's and and both, mm -hmm. which means that somewhere in the middle of these two is a, is a truth that works. The truth that's yeah, I mean, and and it depends what you it kind of depends what you mean by middle because in the in the case of you know should I be far left or should I be far right politically yeah well I think most reasonable people are kind of in the, literally in the middle they exist in the middle right but in this particular case this degree offered by this college and this program at yeah. this price is not in the middle this this one sucks. This one is awesome. Is is not doesn't suck. It you're going to make more money in your life year upon year upon year compounding. You're going to have skills that other people don't have and it's going to be a meaningful degree. What you got to figure out so neither of these are in the middle. They're they they right. they exist here and here. Interesting. What we have to do is be able to distinguish between this and this because the people that are selling this are going to want this to look a lot like this. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna make these two things. I'll never forget. I was in uh, Vietnam, and we walked up on this. Um, what's that place with the the big guitar? Hard, Hard Rock Cafe. Cafe. Oh, I was, I try to think what would have a big guitar in <laughs> yeah, Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we walk into There's this. There's a Hard Rock Cafe in Vietnam. There is. Yeah. This hard rock cafe in the middle of nowhere, Vietnam, right? And and it's like the hard rock cafe. And we're like, what? What is going on? Hard rock cafe. So we go in. It is literally a fake dive bar hard rock cafe. They've completely just stolen the hard rock cafe marketing, the whole thing. But it is a 
dingy dive bar. Wow. But they got us. They mm -hmm. got us to come in, mm -hmm. right? Because it was like something we recognized as being, you know, whatever. And so when these folks are selling it, they're selling it as, as that. They're selling it to look like this. It's just like when you buy these, you know, you, people want a Mercedes, people want a, a nice car. Mm -hmm. So they buy the, you know, the $20,000 version of that nice car, or the $30,000 version of the $100,000 car. Well, you're kind of getting ripped off. You'd, you'd be better off buying a $30,000 car that's really a $30,000 car mm -hmm. rather than a $17,000 car that has a twelve or thirteen thousand dollar logo on it. Right. 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 <laughs> so you're probably gonna get less quality there because it's it, but it, but it's it's they're selling it to pretend to be something that they're not. So you have to look deeper. Yeah. Nature does this all the time, by the way. Nature mimics all the time. So you, you know they pretend it, the birds that puff their chests out, they're pretending to be big. They're camouflaging. They're pretending to be trees. They're they're pretending to be whatever. Nature's constantly mimicking and pretending to be something that it's not. And so this is just built into marketing and things like that. Yeah. I mean, and I guess to me, it reminds me of um, what we were talking about. I don't know if it was this a couple episodes ago about the false relationships people will build for you. Yes. Between and among for things. Sure. Right. So we, I think we were talking about happy meals. Yes. And uh, there was another one. Coke is life. Coke is life. Coke is friendship. Um, yeah. No, it's not. It's sugar water. It's goop. It's liquid goop. It's liquid goop. And also Twinkie. We're goop. never going to get any sponsorship. Right. Because <laughs> we just rip on companies. <laughs> <laughs> Only like goop companies. Huge goop companies. No, there are other oh things God. that we, you know. I just, I think we did, we're not going to get Mercedes. Or Gatorade. Or Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not that we're thinking about it, but. No. Good that's luck. That's funny. But if I keep talking, if you go back to where we get like Joe's barbecue, is there a Joe's barbecue? Some I'm sure somewhere there's some guy there. named Joe that has a barbecue. Yeah, I bet it's good. The Cabrera Lab podcast sponsored by I Joe's barbecue in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Um, sponsored by the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> we're like sponsored Ho Chi Minh by. City. <laughs> we're sponsored by water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that was really interesting. I think that's a wrap. I think we've talked about enough. Let's call it work day. life balance. Work life balance. That's a, that's it's all a mental model. Work life balance. Is it a thing? <laughs> it is a mental model. It is a mental model thing. And that's a but is it a thing? That's for you to decide. It's for you to decide. And that is a wrap. Mm -hmm.